Yes, so doctor, uh, we've heard of uh, this your dictionary okay. that has been published on Play Store. Yes. The Wiley Design. What what inspired you to develop that software? Well, uh, it didn't start as a software. Uh, I I can say that I started by uh, actually using pen and paper uh, way back in 1986. Uh, I was first inspired by one American missionary, Paul Schneider. Uh, he arrived in Ghana around that time, 1986, and uh, I was chosen to help translate for him. Uh, he used to go to the villages to preach and all that. By then, I had uh, I was in sixth form in secondary school, uh, secondary school then, and I was approached to help him because he didn't understand the local language. And so the idea of uh, coming out with a bilingual dictionary to wit English Wale dictionary uh, came from him. And so he encouraged me to actually undertake the project and even paid for it. He assisted me to some point uh, when, <clears throat> sorry, when he, he left the country. And, uh, but I continued with my personal resources. As I indicated, I used to translate in pencil. Uh, and then when he left, uh, I decided to have it typed out. So I paid for the typesetting and everything and getting people to proofread it. I can remember my brother Hamidu Insa and then uh, Mr. Usman Sagripio and then my own brother Mr. Musa Dansier. They went through it, made uh, suggested changes which I effected and finally had it published somewhere in 2016, first by Bibles International USA and then secondly by the Summer Institute of Linguistics, that is SIL. They actually put it online and uh, what you are referring to as the app. Yes, and uh, the whole project uh, comprises, uh, let me check, cross check, housing plus 85,000 plus? Yes. Wow. 85,000. Uh, let me get the appropriate. Okay, let me uh, post. Okay, 85,064 entries. Entries. Wow, yes. wow, wow. Yes. We use the Oxford Advanced English Learners Dictionary okay. as maybe our source text in linguistics. We normally call that the source text. Okay. And um, we didn't go by, uh, let me say, it wasn't word for word. It wasn't all the entries in the Oxford Advanced Learners English Dictionary that we translated. We identified those that are more current, that uh, our people will need to know, and then we translated as such. Yes, so first of all, I would say the inspiration as for language, for language to develop in any society, we know that there is a need for some kind of database of the lexicon of that language. And so uh, the idea of coming out with a dictionary was help, was to help preserve the language so that future generations may know what pertains to the language. Because uh, it took about, let me say, 30 years. <laughs> 1986, <laughs> we are now in the 2023. 20, 20, yes. So, uh, I haven't done the mathematics, but then we will say nearly, uh, mm. or maybe more than no, 30, no, 37, 30. 37 and above. Yes, yes. And so, well, if we put it back to maybe 19, sorry, 2017, when it was finally published online, we say it's about 30 years. Yes. You know, and over that period, we know that today some of the words that were even used then may not be known by our current generation. Okay. And so uh, I see it as uh, an inspiration because it's going to preserve the language. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I saw you putting some pictures like Nambugo and the light. Yes. So how do you come by those pictures? Uh, well, those uh, pictures we showed to the hunters. Yes. Uh, the interesting thing is that sometimes 
a single word, translating a single word could take me days because I had to consult people, go to this person, go to that person and find out how best to translate it so that our people will understand. So when it came to uh, what we call fauna and the flora, that is the names of animals and the names of some plant species in the area, I had to go around, consult people like hunters, consult farmers to find out how best we could render those concepts in the language. Wow, 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 interesting. Uh, so like you've said, uh, we know that Gare is growing. Yes. So what are the, listen, the job prospects, the opportunities one can get for building a career okay. in Dagari or Wale? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I thank you for establishing that distinction, Dagari or Wale. They are, they are almost, uh, what, <laughs> the same. Wow. Yes. Uh, and they are highly intelligible. Okay. Yes. Well, first of all, uh, we will say, before we even talk about uh, a career in uh, that language, uh, everybody must know something about their language. If you don't know your language, language is part and parcel of our culture. If you don't know your language, then it means that your knowledge of your own culture is even uh, not complete. So first of all, it is important that everybody, including people in school, students, pupils at basic levels, to know something about their, their language. And uh, concerning, uh, let's say, job prospects, I am an example of uh, <laughs> benefiting from uh, using our own language even to the highest degree. I did an MPhil in linguistics and uh, I did translation studies on that. So, and that has given me a job. Okay, besides maybe using what I have learned to teach, to share knowledge with others, uh, I have been a consultant for uh, various translation projects. I returned from Sunsong uh, just last week where I am helping as uh, the adjunct consultant to the Anufo group. If you have heard of the Chokosi language, uh, through my chief consultant, Dr. Fabian Dapla, I had the opportunity to go there from time to time and uh, last week was an example. They are translating portions of the Bible and uh, with my linguistic background and with my little experience in translating, I was asked to go supervise the work, you know. So that's an example and uh, I have had the opportunity to attend conferences uh, within the nation and outside the nation. I mean because of my background in linguistics. And so um, I think that uh, knowing the language and knowing it very well can help you know your culture and also can help you find a job. Okay. Uh, you are a journalist, okay. the radio stations, people need to translate the language, you know, from English into uh, Dagari or Wale so that our people can understand. I've had the opportunity to work for the U.S. Advanced Program, uh, where portions of guidelines for planting maize, how to use pesticides, how to control uh, uh, insect pests and all that, uh, were translated into Wale, and then farmers who subscribe to that network could receive text messages on their phones. Uh -huh, using that to guide them as to how they could improve upon agronomic practices and then pest control on their farms. So it's highly beneficial. It's highly beneficial. Yeah. So like we've said, so can Dakari go beyond the Upper West and Savannah regions, like cutting into uh, the Ashanti eastern parts of Ghana? Uh, do you think we are limited, we are not going beyond the savannah and upper west? Uh, I will not say we are limited. If you look at uh, the population census 
for is it 2010 and even the 2020, you look at the population of the Upper West region for the Dagari-speaking people. That is quite high. I cannot give specific figures, but quite a good number of our people are not resident in the region. All the way from, uh, uh, let me say, Tanina down to Sunyane, Techiman, and all those places, go down to Takurade, where, mention it, name it, the Radagava there. And uh, I, I, I believe that once the Radagava there, uh, they can make good use of the materials that we have in the language, and that can preserve the language. Okay. Yes. So with uh, students being assaulted or caned, mm -hmm. flopped, yeah. for speaking Dagare in schools, do you have something to say about that? Yes, uh, I don't actually subscribe to punishing students for speaking what is known as vernacular. Uh, traveling along the road from Wa to Accra, I have seen inscriptions on buildings, uh, no vernacular here, speak English. And that is to say children or pupils in the, uh, the basic level must learn how to speak English to the detriment of their mother tongues. I can remember even in the primary school, I attended school for some time in the Eastern region, specifically the Salvation Army primary and middle schools at uh, Begro in the Eastern region. And I can remember uh, some teachers who even put together some empty shells of snails, you know, and then if you made a mistake of speaking uh, vernacular, they were hung around your neck for some time you know, as a way of embarrassing you to let others know that they should learn to speak English. And in fact, going to meet out corporal punishment to pupils or students who spoke Dagari or Wali, I see as something that would discourage them from knowing their language and their culture. Uh, we should not forget that Wali and Dagari, for that matter, uh, uh, I mean, it's a language that is taught from basic level to the highest level, PhD level, in our universities, in the country, and even beyond. You go to the University of Ghana, you go to the University of Education, Winneba, uh, University of, uh, I mean, Cape Coast, you go to KNUST, Dagari is done up to PhD level. You know, and recently I am happy to learn that uh, our sister language, Sisali, which belongs to a different uh, language family altogether, was also uh, uh, accepted to be taught at the tertiary level, you know. But Dagari has been uh, on the list for a long time and has been taught in the universities for a long time. People who have studied outside have even used Dagari as their research field and they have been awarded their PhDs in it. So that is very, very important. And uh, language must be learned right from the basic level. And so if we are discouraging uh, primary school pupils from learning their own language, I don't think we are doing right. In fact, their understanding of English or French or what we may call the L2 will better be enhanced if they know their own mother tongue better. Okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you too, my brother.